everyone. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Tessia and these are beauty lessons. What God is speaking, teaching, and revealing to me. I am in the car because we are at the Scottsdale um, Waste Management Golf Tournament, the Waste Management Open. We have been sharing the gospel here all week this week and um, I just want to share some things that God's been showing me and teaching me throughout the week. The first thing is the power of prayer in uh, evangelism and how God just really answers prayer. So the first day we were here, it was Monday, it wasn't raining, it was a sunny day, like 75, and the uh, event was free to go in. And so a couple of us would go in at a time. It wasn't very crowded at all either because the first two days seemed to be lighter days um, in terms of the crowds. And so uh, we, a couple people went in and um, we did one-on-one -on -one evangelism. And right at the beginning, we there was these people rapping um, kind of after you pass through the gates, but before you really are into the event. And they had uh, a speaker there and they had, you know, uh, stuff that they were kind of selling there. And we were like, how did you get in? Because, you know, they're kind of strict about what they let in to the tournament because we would come in and preach if that was possible. Um, we would be preaching there because everybody's passing by. And so they told us that they snuck in, that they didn't actually go in um, through the front. They they snuck in. But we started talking to one of the, the guys. He was from Atlanta. And we said, you know, what's in the way of your relationship with Jesus? And he was opening up to us about um, his children and his life. But he said, marijuana's in the way. So I was sharing my testimony with him about, um, you know, coming out of addiction, saying that God has more for you. Whatever you're looking for in marijuana, you won't find. Someone once told me, whatever you're looking for at the bottom of a bottle, you'll never find. And it's true. I never found it because everything I was looking for, I found in Jesus Christ. He's the one who satisfied me. He's the one who changed me. He's the one who, who filled me. So I told this guy that, and he said, will you pray for me? Um, and I said, what do you want us to pray for you? And he wasn't really sure. I said, do you want us to pray that you would be delivered out of this lifestyle? And he said, yes, pray that for me. Um, cause he also said there's two other people in his life telling him that he needs to get right with God. Two people who are very close to him. Um, his children's mom and another close friend are telling him you need to get right with God. You need to turn to Jesus. And so we said, God's calling you. If you have people in your life already telling you, um, to turn to God, God's calling you. So we prayed with him. David led him in a prayer, um, asking God to deliver him from that lifestyle, to free him from marijuana, to change his heart, to change his life. I told him he could actually um, listen to the Bible on YouTube. And uh, he didn't know that. He's like, I, I have never read the Bible. Um, it's hard for me to read. I said, you can listen to the Bible. And he's like, I can find it on YouTube. I said, yeah, you, I mean, you could find it all over. Um, but you could listen to the Bible on YouTube. And told him to listen to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the Gospels, all about Jesus. Um, and it was just a really blessed encounter because it was predicted rain on Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday. And on Monday, you know, it wasn't raining and um, it was kind of God confirming, like, I want you here. Even if it rains, I want you here. I have people here that I want you to reach, that I want you um, to to touch. And so we it was confirmation from God that he had brought us here. He had a purpose for us here. And um, he was going to do good things on this trip. So the next day was Tuesday. And um, it wasn't raining yet, but it was very cloudy. And we went out there, kind of did the same thing, preaching the gospel, went into the event because you can go in the first two days for free. And um, the uh, it started to rain that afternoon around 3 o'clock, 3.30. It started to rain. We were not prepared for the rain. Um, we got a little cold and then it, we didn't have any trash bags to cover our equipment really. So, um, we kind of headed in early that day, got a little bit rained out, headed in around four 30. Um, and, um, and said, okay, it rained today. Maybe it won't rain tomorrow. Well, it rained all night, Tuesday night and Wednesday, um, it was cloudy and raining. And so we pack up all our stuff. We prepare a little more with the clothes, wear more clothes, um, get warm. And uh, we prayed all the way uh, there that God would split the clouds. Um, in James, it says that uh, I believe it was Elijah 
was just a man like you. And um, he prayed that God would shut up the heavens for three years and it didn't rain. And um, then he prayed again and it, it did rain. And so he's just a man like you. So pray believing. And so we prayed, God, Elijah was just a man like us. And um, we pray, God, that you would split the clouds for us. Split the clouds and let there be sun where we're preaching. Um, the other thing is there's Jehovah's Witnesses on the four corners of the intersection that we preach at. And then there's two more on an intersection close by. So there's Jehovah's Witnesses everywhere. And they get there at 8 a.m. We're an hour away, so we're not going to get there at 8 a.m. Um, so there's kind of like this uh, territory battle of, you know, trying to take the territory and, and preach. Um, but they are not really that big of a threat because they don't say anything to anyone unless anyone talks to them. So we can just kind of stand by them and, and do what we do. But the um, we prayed that God would split the clouds and we get there and it starts hailing. And we were like, oh Lord, this is the opposite of, of stopping the rain. It's hailing now. We can't preach in hail. I don't even know if anyone's going to be there in hail. Um, but it, it hailed for about 10 minutes and, um, and then it stopped and the skies split and um, it's sunshine started shining. And so we go over there and the Jehovah's Witnesses are gone because they were there when we first arrived before it started hailing. We go over, we set up um, as it's now sunny or beginning to be sunny and the Jehovah's Witnesses are gone. We preach all day. Um, it was a great day. It was a blessed day, but it really, and there was a rainbow at one point. There was a rainbow and it was just like, God, you know, and there's so many people, droves and droves of people. I am amazed that so many people show up at a golf tournament in the rain um, and persevere in going, but we said, okay, God, we're, we're, you're worthy and we'll preach in the rain. And, um, oh, and it wasn't raining. It stopped raining. I mean, it was on and off, but you know, God was saying, I want you here. I have you here. So he answered prayer. It was powerful. Um, and then that night we ended up going to a Bible study that we, um, know some people here who were running a Bible study and, uh, it was really powerful. David preached on your calling and embracing your calling. Um, but after that, you know, they had a time of fellowship and dinner and um, I can get uh, fearful and kind of like, I don't know what to do with myself. Who am I supposed to talk to? What am I supposed to do? And I kept finding myself back in this corner by this mom. And I was like, God, I like, I just need you to use me. If you want to use me here, I need you to use me. So please, um, you know, open the door. If there's anyone here you want me to talk to, if there's anyone here that you want me to minister to, again, it's prayer, the power of prayer. I was praying because I just felt like I'm not sure what to do with myself. And, um, I just want to be used by you. So I find myself over by this mom and I had tried to start conversation. It just seems like it wasn't happening. And I finally said, you know, when did you give your life to Jesus? And I, we just engaged in a conversation. First, we were talking about her family. She's a mom of four kids, um, two under two, two kids under two. So I said, you know, that's a lot. Um, and she is recently a, a stay at home mom. So that's a transition for her. So I just was talking to her, you know, we connected some traded, um, contact info and it was like, that was the purpose, God, you, you know, God connected me with that person and who knows in the future what God wants to do through that connection, but she seemed to be really blessed and encouraged by it. So, um, and I was blessed and encouraged by it. It was like, okay, God, I, you're here, you're working. And then, uh, I got to talking to this other girl there who I hadn't met and, um, she opened up about some things happening in her life. I ministered to her about fatherlessness and what it means to really be fatherless. It's not just having a father who, um, physically wasn't present, but it's a father who didn't fulfill the role that God would have wanted them to fulfill, which many fathers don't. And so, um, it leaves us fatherless and there's all these effects, these negative effects that happen on a person, on a life when they're fatherless. And so I, we ministered to her, prayed with her, um, sent her my, my blog posts about fatherlessness, which I can link below. And, um, it was just really blessed. Again, it was the power of prayer. I was like, God, you know, thank you for answering. Thank you for using me. Thank you for, um, for what you do, the ways you work and move. So the next day, Thursday, um, it's raining again. We wake up and it's raining again. And we're like, God, you know, please stop the rain and um, we need you to stop the rain and and we we arrive and it's dark it's darker than the day before it's like foggy misty rainy and we're like Lord we really need your help are people even gonna be there can we even preach in this we go out there are droves and droves of people passing through the intersection where we preach no Jehovah's Witnesses and we're like 
okay, God, we're going to preach. We're going to show up. We, we get and where we're parking and uh, the rain lets up a little bit. It gets light enough for us to get out there. We get out there. We preach um, in the rain for an hour. We're a testament to those around us that, um, you know, Jesus is worthy. A uh, drunk guy came up. He was just kind of standing around. At first, he tried to hang on the cross. And he's like, isn't that what I'm supposed to do? Why are you trying to hang me on the cross? It's like, no, your sinful self is supposed to be hung on the cross. Jesus already died for your sin, though. But you've got to crucify your sinful self. So he's like, I'm just going to hang out. I'm just going to hang out. So he ends up coming and standing by the camera. And he's like, I'm not a creeper. I'm just watching. And then he said, why are you here? And I said, because we love people and we want to show people the love of Jesus and we have to go where the people are. And because there's so many people here, we, we want to, many of these people will never step foot in a church and we want to tell them about the love and the freedom and the healing of Jesus Christ. And I said, I used to be an alcoholic and, um, no one really told me about the power of God in a real way that, that could free me and deliver me and uh, change me. You know, everybody was kind of already thought I was a Christian when I was in addiction. People thought I was a Christian and they just knew that I shouldn't be living that lifestyle. But there wasn't really anyone who, who came in and told me this, like God wants to deliver you in a mighty way, in a powerful way. God has more for you. Um, that wasn't really what the message that was sent. So I, I said, told this man, you know, we want to be where the people are and tell them about the true hope and the true freedom and the true healing of Jesus Christ. There is real hope and real power in him. And um, he set me free from addiction. So that's what we're out here doing. And he didn't have anything to say. He just kind of shook his head and said, uh, okay. Um, and he ended up walking away. So God wanted him to hear that, that there's real hope and, and freedom in Jesus. And that's why we're there because we love people and we want people to know the love of Jesus Christ. So, um, those would be, and then it stopped raining and the sun came out and we were all so happy when the sun came out and we ended up preaching for the rest of the day and it was blessed um, and it's not raining today so I just wanted to share about the power of prayer God and I was feeling heavy yesterday too that's the other thing I was feeling heavy when we woke up just emotionally like really heavy I don't know why but you know just negative not good um, kind of prone towards annoyance or sadness or frustration as soon as we got out there and started preaching I just felt the power of the preaching and something lift off of me. And I was like, this God is good. This is powerful. This is mighty. And so Satan really tries to oppose you and oppose evangelism and resist it. And um, I just felt it fall off. As soon as David started preaching, I knew we were right where we were supposed to be. Whatever Satan was doing to, to, to oppress me was totally loosed off of my mind and my emotions and my body and the power of God showed up. And so, um, I just wanted to encourage everyone. Prayer is powerful, you know, to, to be connected to God, to be right in the center of his will is what you want in your everyday life. You want to know that you're perfectly following and obeying Jesus Christ. Um, not in the sense that you're perfect, but in the sense that you're trusting God and you're right where he wants you. Perfection in the sense of surrender. You want to be surrendered to God in your mind and your will and your emotions and available for him to use you. So so perfectly in his will is um, perfectly, you know, in this perfectly submitted to him, surrendered to him with all your heart saying, God, I'm available. I'm here. I want you to use me. Um, dependence. You know, you want to be right in the center of God's will and in dependence on him. Um, and he will lead and he will guide and he will provide and he will work miracles um, and he will do mighty, mighty things. So if you could please pray for us. We have three days left of this outreach. It is supposed to rain again tomorrow. So if you could pray that it doesn't rain and we could just have three days of sunshine to preach the gospel to the lost and the dying, that would be great. I pray um, that this video encourages you and blesses you. And I pray you all have a blessed and a beautiful day, a day filled with God's beauty. Bye.